In our company, we like to fail fast. I hear that expression quite frequently and often in organizations where I think to myself, you don't like to fail at any speed. <laughs> you don't like to fail fast, fail slow. Failure is not really an option in this environment. I think to myself, oh my goodness, how do the employees feel being on the receiving end of these leadership messages about failing fast when they can you know, count the number of people who failed and aren't here anymore to tell the story? That's such a common reason that psychological safety is eroded in an organization is we have these great expressions that, I don't know, the leaders heard at some conference or read in Fast Company, and they wanna try it in their organization without thinking about how things like that don't transfer into corporate cultures that are more staid, more bureaucratic, and more conservative. So what you're actually asking for when you ask people to fail fast is you're trying to get a little bit of that mojo from Silicon Valley startups, from design thinking. And the whole idea is that we're gonna try stuff, we're not gonna be afraid, we're gonna you know, learn very quickly from um, rounds of iteration and prototyping. And well, that's a wonderful thing. And a lot of corporate environments could use a lot more of that. But framing it as failing fast is not really gonna work in most corporate environments. So let's just talk about it as learning fast. What could we do to learn fast? How do we rapid prototype? How do we pilot something? How do we try it, A, B test, see what works? There are lots of ways to learn quickly in a corporate environment that don't feel quite as frightening as asking people to fail fast. The other big problem with this expression of fail fast is it kind of celebrates failure without differentiating between two very different kinds of failure, one of which you want more of and one you really want to discourage. So I talk about the two different kinds of failure as the difference between a savvy misstep and a sloppy mistake. So a savvy misstep is something where you deliberately choose to do something to learn from it. Um, you engage all the relevant stakeholders to make sure you've considered the issue from different angles. You prepare for risk in advance. So if something goes wrong, you're ready to pull the plug or, or cope with it. It's something where you have a process for bringing that you know, process, that those results back to the table in order to evaluate what did we learn, how did it go, and all of that makes for learning fast with a savvy misstep. Savvy missteps are awesome. We, you know, we took that step, we thought about it first, we thought the ice might be thin, and because of that, we were holding on to shore. We only got a soaker on one foot. We didn't go all the way in. That's a savvy misstep. But if you just celebrate noble failures or, or failing fast, well, when you do that, the problem is that those who make you know, sloppy mistakes, they're like, well, I was just failing fast. That's what the boss told me to do. A sloppy mistake is something where you are not planful about it. Um, often, when we make those kind of sloppy mistakes, we're kind of trying our own thing or half-assing it, and therefore we haven't engaged anybody else. Sometimes other departments don't even know we're putting things at risk. That is a very, very rocky situation. Because these sloppy mistakes are often embarrassing or because they didn't have a lot of thought in them in advance, we also tend to hide our sloppy mistakes and you can't learn fast from something you're trying to cover up, so that's not useful. So differentiating between a savvy misstep and a sloppy mistake is so critical and when we just use expressions like fail fast, we fail to do that. So. A couple ideas. If you want that feeling, if you want your corporate bureaucratic organization to feel a little bit more innovative, great. But let, instead of using the expression fail fast, let's talk about learning fast. And when we're communicating about the importance of that, it's really, really valuable to differentiate between these are the kinds of savvy missteps we want more of, but this is still a sloppy mistake and there's gonna be consequences for sloppy mistakes. Those shouldn't go away. So if you want to encourage an innovative culture without really being ambiguous about it, making people feel psychologically unsafe about 
which is this, does this count? Well, it's really important to talk about learning fast and to make sure you talk about the difference between savvy missteps and sloppy mistakes.